Hi everyone, it's Saab here. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to make milk buns filled with coconut cream. First, you want to make the roux for the bread, which is actually a Japanese method for making milk bread. I'm going to pour half a cup of whole milk into a measuring cup. And into that, I'm going to add a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. I'm going to give this all a nice little mix here. Traditionally, this is made on the stove top, but I'm going to use the microwave. I'm going to microwave this on high for 30 seconds. And I did just that. I took it out, so now I'm stirring it. And then I'm going to pop it back in for another 30 seconds, stir again, and then one more time for 15 more seconds. And at the end of that, it's going to look something like this, kind of like a thickened mashed potato texture. So you want to set that aside and it's going to cool down for just about 15 minutes or so. I have here two tablespoons of melted unsalted butter with two tablespoons of avocado oil. You can use any oil that you have on hand. In my mixing bowl, I have four cups of all-purpose flour and half a cup of sugar. I have my warm roux, you want it warm, and some warm water, about, well, one cup of that. And to my mixing bowl, I'm adding in two packets of Red Star Instant Yeast. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in one cup of warm water right after I throw in my yeast. And then I'm going to stir my butter and avocado oil mixture, throw that in. And then I'm going to add in my warm roux. It's really important that this is all pretty much warm or very warm. That's going to help activate that yeast and the yeast loves warmth. Now I'm going to add on my dough hook attachment. You can do all of this by hand, but you know, it's just, you're going to need a lot of elbow grease to do it. So I'm going to turn the mixer on to stir. I have a quarter cup of all purpose flour on the side here that I'm going to add in in a second. I did not forget about the sea salt. We are going to add that in just a minute. After about a minute, I'm going to add in all of my sea salt, one teaspoon plus a quarter teaspoon, and the rest of my all-purpose flour. You want to knead this for a good eight minutes. At the end of eight minutes, your dough should seem pretty soft and supple at this point. You want to place your dough onto a clean work surface. Your dough should still be a little bit sticky and tacky at this point and you shouldn't need to add any additional flour. Right now I'm just kneading it into a nice smooth round ball. It should be, like I said, pretty soft and supple at this point. If it's not, then you put too much flour. So you might want to hold off on the last quarter cup depending on where you live. Humidity, that plays a really big factor. Using the same mixing bowl as before, I'm going to lightly spray it with some coconut oil spray. You can use whatever spray you want. Place the dough into the mixing bowl and then spray over it one more time. And then on top of that will go a piece of saran wrap. You want to make sure that you place it directly on the surface of the dough. This is to prevent a crust from forming. And because I'm a little extra, I'm going to cover that with a piece of cloth to make sure it stays warm and draft free. You want it to double in size. After, hmm, it could take 30 minutes, it could take 20, depending on how warm it is. It's going to look something like this. You want to place your doubled dough onto a clean work surface one more time. And I like to use my hands and kind of poke at it. And then I'm going to bring the dough up and over itself. I want to make sure to get rid of any, you know, additional air bubbles. And your goal here is to really try to get it back down to the original size before it doubled in size. So after that, I'm going to cut this in half. After I cut the large piece of dough in half, I'm going to cut it again. So what we're essentially doing is we're going to quarter it. And I'm going to take each little piece and I'm going to quarter it again. So you're going to end up with anywhere from 16 to 18 pieces. I say 18 because depending on the size of it, I will kind of move some dough around. So I'm going to take one of my pieces and I'm going to make it into a nice round ball. Like I said before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quarter this piece. I'm going to take all of my dough that I'm not using, place it underneath the clean cloth and start out with one of them. I'm going to take this little piece and I'm going to make it a nice smooth ball with my hands. 
take your rounded ball and then place it on the counter and just use your hands to go back and forth in a tight little motion. This is going to smooth it out and to make sure that there's no seams on the bottom and it's going to tighten it up. So now we're going to actually shape it out. So I'm going to use my hands and just flatten it out. You can use um, a little roller here I have here that I bought from Michaels and I'm going to roll it out a bit. Not too much, you wanna keep it a circle and then I'm just going to bring the sides up kind of like a taco and then I'm gonna pinch the seam to seal it. It's going to look kind of like a pot sticker at this point. You roll it up over itself and then this is just rolling it back and forth on, a, on your counter to make sure that you seal the seam. I'm going to give the ends a nice big pinch just to give it a nice little boat shape when it's done baking. You want to cover these up with a clean dish towel until they are slightly puffy. It should take anywhere from 15 to 20, maybe 30 minutes if it's not really warm where you're at. I use an instant active dry yeast so these get pretty puffy pretty quickly. So in my kitchen today it took about 20 minutes and it's going to look something like this. Just slightly puffy. Bake in a preheated 350 degree oven for 25 minutes and they'll look perfect like this. So now I'm going to show you what you want to do if you want to add the desiccated coconuts um, to the tops of these. Brush it with some uh, melted butter right out of the oven and then I'm going to dip these into some desiccated coconut. These are unsweetened coconut flakes. Roll your buns around in the coconut flakes and proceed with the rest until you're done. And they'll look just like this. They're very pretty, they're delicious, but guess what? My kids hate coconut. Funny, right? That's why I have to show you guys two different variations, but these are ready to fill. So for this one, just look, they're so soft, so yummy. You guys are going to love this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little bread knife here and I'm gonna show you guys how I would serve it if I was going to go to some party or a potluck. I'm going to cut it down, not all the way down the middle, just enough to where I can slice it open or tear it apart. And I'm actually going to take out some of the dough just on one side because it's just honestly too much bread for me. Now, duh, when I'm not throwing this away, I'm going to eat it. I, I'm going to eat it while I'm filling them and my kids eat you know, the insides and my husband eats it, everyone eats it, so it does not go to waste. Um, like I said, if it doesn't bother you, you love bread and you love the carbs, then go for it. But honestly, for me, it's just too much. And now all that's left is to fill these with my homemade coconut cream filling. I do not recommend filling this up all the way. I would go about halfway. I'm just going to add additional plain whipped cream to the tops of these just for aesthetics. It's just for looks and for the pictures. Don't do this because if someone bites into it, they are going to have cream everywhere. So again, this is just to make it pretty for pictures. I will have clear instructions on the blog on how to make the coconut whipped cream. The video went a little bit longer than I'd like, so I'm not going to show you guys how to make it today. All that's left is to dust it off with a bit of powdered sugar and you are good to go. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.